most of the time, life confuses me. It seems so random, and maybe it is, which makes looking for meaning to it seem pretty silly. But if there is some purpose for life, then what's the purpose of the HIV pandemic? I witnessed it all begin in the 1980s. I saw it take away people I knew and I loved, and I still couldn't tell you why. And for people who test HIV positive today, is there some purpose? Do we really need HIV to appreciate life more? Isn't that a little severe? What's the lesson here? How do you take wisdom from a disease? In other words, what's it all about, Alfie? I mean, what's the meaning of all of this? I tested positive 25 years ago, and if that was meant to be some sort of wake-up call so that I would stop being some sort of shallow faggot, well, it got my attention. But if my existence is more important than all of those friends that I lost and who died and who were great people and who wanted to live and who could have done great things, I mean, that sucks. And don't give me all that crap about HIV as a gift and HIV taught me how to live and to love. Life teaches us about life. HIV is not a gift. A Mercedes is a gift. Besides, I was a drug addict before AIDS ever happened. And as soon as AIDS settled down in my community, I went right back to being a drug addict again. So it's not as if AIDS taught me a whole lot. But I still hold out hope that there's some meaning in all of this. So I talked to three really important people in my life. I want you to hear what they had to say about it. The first person is Dr. Jesse Peel. Jesse is one of my oldest friends in Atlanta. He's a retired psychiatrist. He's been living with HIV since the beginning. And he started many of the first organizations here in Atlanta, so he's been really involved. The first thing I wanted to know from Jesse was, how has AIDS changed him, for better or for worse? I don't put off things. If there's something I, I want to do, I, I, I plan to do it now, not next year or five years from now. I try to keep my life full of doing things, um, not just... So purpose? Having a purpose? Yes, purpose. You have to find a way to make yourself feel useful, that, that, that you're doing something for somebody else, not just for yourself. When I came to Atlanta, you were like Mr. AIDS guy. That is, you were on all the boards, or you had been on every board in town one time or another. And when you're gone, your name will remain because it is on a plaque somewhere. And for me, for the longest time, that was what it was about for me. I don't want anybody to forget about me when I'm gone. There's nothing but wrong with that. Fulfillment would be to know, for me to know now, that there There's will be no plenty way. of people who will miss me when I'm There's gone. There's no way you can. You have to live your life with integrity. You and, and you involve yourself with other people and try to make the world a little bit better place than much how you found it. I don't have to be done something necessarily profound. And the thing that may have the most influence may be something you never even thought of. I remember a time around five years ago, you were in a funk for a while. And that's obviously changed. After a while, you've been the AIDS poster boy for long enough. What else are you going to do? I kind of had run out of, out of things useful to do in that arena. So what happened? I decided to get involved in things that didn't have to do with death and dying. Mm -hmm. And I needed to do mm -hmm. something different. Mm -hmm. uh, I got on the board of the, uh, the Gay Men's Chorus. You have seen me at my some low points. Mm, yes, sir. Okay, and I have sat on this very sofa, crying my eyes out. I had just gotten out of jail. I was a spiritually bankrupt man, you know, who was dealing with his drug addiction. And I remember looking at your face. You looked at me like, son, you need to get your shit together. <laughs> your life wasn't over. You needed to, to dust yourself off and figure out another way to do it. And mm -hmm. you did. Mm -hmm. You got yourself sober. Mm -hmm. You wrote a book. I was really blown away when I read that. What we've gone through can have meaning for other people. And you know, I hear that over and over from the different people I've talked to. It's about being of service to other people. That's what gives your life meaning. What why else are we here? Speaking of the subject of meaning, you mean you mean a lot to me. You mean a lot to me. You know that? Well, I appreciate that. Thanks for doing this for me. I love you. I hope this is useful. Useful? See, that's your word. <laughs> we'll spend all this time and not, not have anything uh, worthwhile come out of it. That's right. That's the story of life right there. You don't want to spend all this time and have nothing come out of it. Exactly. So, being useful is a worthy commitment. But I wondered to myself, would my own doctor agree with all of this? So at my next scheduled doctor appointment with Dr. David Morris, by the way, my T-cells are great, my viral load is great, 
At my next scheduled appointment, I asked him, what's it like working in HIV for so long in a profession where you see so much mortality? How do you make it through and how do you find meaning in that? I get most out of life and my profession by serving other people. And I think that's a good metaphor for the big picture. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It's in giving and serving that you get meaning. It's not out of getting, it's out of giving. What would you say to people who are positive or just trying to figure out how to keep going? Take baby steps. That's the biggest part of it. You can't get it all. Half a life is showing up. Half a life is just getting started and getting through the day. And that's the biggest piece for the beginning. Do you have any advice for me? Finding someone to love in a complete way transforms you. It gives you stability to your life. It gives you a reason to live. It gives you a reason to go on. And to me, it's the most satisfying thing there is, personally. My last partner left me when he had to put me into rehab for drug addiction. That was a few years ago. And only recently have we reconciled. Wow. I am now understanding what it's like to love somebody in a complete way. But all of this is what makes this next interview so bittersweet. Chris Glosser has been involved with reconciling gay and lesbian people with the church all of his life. That's what he's devoted his life to. He has written books and gives workshops for group church groups and events. And uh, right now he's the pastor of a church right here in Atlanta. I went to see him and there's one more thing about him. He and I were partners for 10 years. Uh, I left him because my secret drug addiction was pulling me away from him and from everybody else. And we haven't really had a good conversation in years. What's wrong with me? What? Because <laughs> you know that I've been asking this question for years. I think everybody cycles back to that same question over and over again. What is the meaning of life? Many people will go to other experiences, like the plague, for example, to understand what other people went through in a similar period, within a similar crisis. I try to figure out how did other people make sense of it, and then from that glean my own answers. So you're saying if I ever picked up a book, perhaps, <laughs> And, or a read, computer. And, and read, oh, I don't know, uh, Anne Frank. <laughs> if I'd ever read about anybody else's experiences, maybe I would find similar thoughts. And I would realize that I'm not the first person to go through these thoughts of mortality or meaning in life. That's the whole nature of spirituality, is that you don't have to invent it on your own. You can uh, find it through others. Because it's not just about the people who are here now. It's about the people who've always, who've been here in the past who have something to, to offer us. Do you think I was supposed to learn something from AIDS? I think we're all supposed to learn something from life. I think God's plans are very general. I mean, God wants us to be happy, uh, to be fulfilled, to help other people. Um, and um, beyond that, I don't think that there's specific content to the plan. I don't think AIDS was part of God's plan. I think that um, there are things, random things that happen in the universe. I don't think there's any faithful person, I mean a person who really believes in a loving God who would think that God would somehow inflict this. You're HIV negative. Mm -hmm. I'm positive. Mm -hmm. Is the meaning of life different for you than it is for me? Well, I think we have more similarities than other people. I think the meaning of life is, can be, is variable. That's what makes us so interesting. Jesus said that uh, not what goes into a person is what defiles a person, but what comes out of the person's heart. So not what happens to a person, not the conditions or circumstances of the, pers the person's life, but how you uh, uh, transform that. Tell me now, you know, go forth my son, <laughs> or whatever, give me some instruction as how I can, how I can walk out this door, how anybody watch, watching this blog and make a change that leads them toward a stronger feeling of what the meaning of it all is. I just off the top of my head, be mindful of your daily schedule. All those places in your life where you feel like you're touching uh, something uh, sacred, something beyond yourself. And I mean, even maybe write it down. If occasionally you go to church, you write that down. Or if you have a really good workout at the gym and feel God's presence, that's a way of uh, recording those times when you feel like something 
wonderful is happening in your life. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. It's good to be with you in a meaningful conversation again. <laughs> I love you. I'm a grateful man today, and people say that that is a spiritual emotion, like a prayer, just to be grateful for who you are and living in this moment right now. I feel like I can be of service to other people, I can help others, and as I understand it, that's what it's all about. I don't have to be defined by my HIV status. I don't have to be defined by, by drug addiction or being gay. I just have to live right now in this moment and be happy. That feels good. So. As always, thanks for watching my blog, thanks for the great comments, please be well, and always look on the bright side of life, always look on the light side of life, if life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten, and that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing.